everyone. I hope you're all doing great. I'm Renzo Ubaldo and welcome to another edition of NEU Spotlight. Kamusta? Nawa ay nasa mabuti kayong kalagayan. Para sa episode na ito ay babalikan natin ang mga kaganapan sa ating universidad. At syempre, kasama pa rin ang mga special feature na inhanda ng Hudyat, ang official student publication ng New Era University. Para sa Events on Spotlight, webinar na ika-125 taon ng kamatayan ni Dr. Jose Rizal, pag-alaala at pagsasakabuluhan, inilunsad ng Center for Philippine Studies at Hudyat. Para naman sa Top Notch, 100% passing rate sa nakaraang September 2021 licensure examination for teachers na kamit ng NEU. Para sa Prof. Kuto, Kilalalin natin ngayong episode si Professor Melisa B. Malunta. New Era University College of Agriculture. Itatampok sa atin ngayon sa College Insight. Para sa Off Campus, bibisitahin natin ang Peblito Paisa sa Medellin, Colombia. Para sa Panoorin at NEU. Muli nating balikan ang ating childhood sa award-winning animated film na Up. At ang panghuli ay para naman sa AIDS. Kilalanin natin ang Olympic sport na weightlifting. Kinunita ng Center for Philippine Studies at Hudyat ang anibersaryo ng ating pambansang bayani na si Gat Jose Rizal sa pamamagitan ng paglulunsad ng webinar na may pamagat na ika-125 taon ng kamatayan ni Dr. Jose Rizal patuloy na pag-alala at pagsasakabuluhan. Alamin ang mga detalye sa balita ni Ilo Kitariano. sa pangunguna ng New Era University Center for Philippine Studies at ng Hudyat, ang webinar na ika-125 taon ng kamatayan ni Rizal patuloy na pag-alaala at pagsasakabuluhan noong ikalabing pito ng Disyembre 2021. Ayon kay Brother Saldi D. Petorio, advisor ng NEU Center for Philippine Studies, ang layunin ng nasabing webinar ay upang pagyamanin ang diskurso tungkol sa ating pamansang bayani, lalo na sa iba't ibang larangan, at upang makatulong sa pagsulong hindi lamang sa kaalaman tungkol sa buhay ni Dr. Jose Rizal, pati na rin sa pagpapakabuluhan sa kanyang mga ginawa para sa atin na nasa kasalukuyang panahon. Ang isinagawang webinar ay kaugnay pa rin ng nakaraang webinar series na Rizal at 160. Nagsilbing mga tagapagsalita ng iba't ibang mga paksa ang mga historyador at iskolar na nagmula sa iba't ibang mga pamantasan. Ang unang paksa na si Jose Rizal sa paglingon sa maningning na nakaraan ng Pilipinas ay tinalakay ni Prof. Joe Antara R. Reyes, lecturer sa UP Archaeological Studies Program. Para sa ikalawang bahagi ng nasabing webinar, tinalakay ni Dr. Vicente C. Villan, Faculty sa University of the Philippines Diliman at advisor and consultant ng NEU Center for Philippine Studies, ang paksang ang pangkalinangang subversyon kay Jose Rizal sa kasaysayang Pilipino. At tinalakay ni Dr. Jose Romel B. Hernandez ng pamantasang de la Sal, Maynila, ang ikatlo at huling paksa na si Jose Rizal sa kamalayan ng mga kilusang bayan sa Pilipinas. Hindi lamang ginunita sa aktibidad na ito ang ika-125 taon ng kamatayan ni Dr. Jose Rizal, kundi binigyang pagpapahalaga din ang kanyang mga mahahalagang ambag sa ating kasaysayan. Ako po si Ailo Kitoriano para sa NEU Spotlight. 
Para sa top notch, 100% passing rate sa nakaraang September 2021 licensure examination for teachers na commit ng NEU. Alam niyo ang mga naging karanasan ng mga bagong licensed teachers sa report ni Trini Shane Fornelius. Isang karangalan na naman ang nakamit ng New Era University matapos magkamit ng 100% passing rate sa nakaraang licensure examination for teachers noong Setyembre 2021. Dalawa sa tatlong passers ng NEU ay ang magkapatid na si Homer at Jake Cueto na nagbahagi ng kanilang karanasan sa nasabing eksaminasyon. Dahil nga po sa pandemya, may mga panahon pong napopostpone dahil nakakancel po yung exam. Hindi naman po siya masyado naging um, tinay ko as tagabal. Bawas ginawa ko itong lakas ng loob ko dahil inisip ko na lang lagi yung mga dapat ko pang pagpokosan sa pag-aaral para mas lalo ko ma-master yung exam ko. Sobrang saya kasi nung araw na ano, nung nalaman namin nung November 30 yung result, may nag-message sa akin na congrats. Ngayon nagtaka ako, saan congrats? Then nagtanong ako sa kanila kasi, bakit congrats? Then dun ko nalaman sa screenshot na sinod nila na andun yung dalawang kweto na kweto home run, kweto jig. Hindi rin naging madali ang kanilang mga naging paghahanda sa nasabing eksaminasyon na idinetalya din ng magkapatid. Ayon sa kanila, Dineactivate ko po lahat ng social media accounts ko kasi alam ko po na yung attention ko once na makapag Bukas po ako ng mga social media and then makapaglaro po ako ng online games. Doon po magpo-focus yung attention ko. Siguro po mga 3 months before ng exam, ginawa ko po, pinadala ko po talaga yung cellphone ko sa kaibigan ko para lang talaga makapag-focus po ako sa pagre-review. Sa una, ang una ko ni-review is yung mahirap. Sa huling buwan, ang ginawa ko, ni-recap ko lahat ng ni-review ko sa mga nakaraang buwan. Siyempre, sa kasama din sa paghanda, sa paghanda hindi mawawala ang pagpapanata sa loob ng kapilya. Para sa mga nagnanais na kumuha ng licensure examination for teachers, ito naman ang naging payo ng magkapatid. Dapat maging masipag ka, maging matyaga, parunong sumunod sa time management. Kung talagang disidido ka na makuha mo yung lisensya, kailangan may focus ka, disiplina talaga sa sarili, na pag alam mong nakaka-distract tong mga bagay na to, Alisin mo muna siya pansamantala para makapag-focus ka talaga at makuha mo talaga yung lisensya na gustong-gusto mong makuha. Saka yung time, huwag mo sasayangin. Ang licensure examination for teachers ay pangatlo sa mga licensing exams na nakakuha ng 100% passing rate ang NEU sa nakaraang taon. Kabilang na dito ang position licensure examination at real estate appraiser licensure examination na sinagawa noong Marso at Setyembre 2021. Ako po si Trini Shane Fernilios para sa NEU Spotlight. Para sa Prof. Kuto, kilalani natin ngayon ang isa sa mga professor ng New Era University na si Prof. Melisa B. Maluntal na ibabahagi sa atin ni Alayna Muni Santos. Professor Melissa Maluntag, also known as Ma'am Meloy to her students, is an accomplished journalist as well as a professor at the College of Communication, teaching courses specializing in journalism and broadcasts. Professor Maluntag graduated from New Era University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Mass Communication. She then continued to pursue another bachelor's degree in business and public administration at Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila, as well as a master's degree in communication at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, with a scholarship from the National Press Club of the Philippines. Ma'am Meloy is a proud wife and mother to three children. In her free time, she enjoys reading novels, watching movies, and most of all, spending time at home with her loved ones. I am a wife, I am a mother. Sabi nga ng husband ko, superwoman ako. Nanay ako, asawa ako, journalist ako. Sudyante ako, nagnag-master ako. Sudyante ako. Oh, tapos dumating pa dun sa time na nagturo ako. So, ang dami, di ba? So, but anyway, ano lang yan eh, it's a matter of time management. Dapat matutunan natin yun. 
Professor Maluntag has had over 30 years of experience in the field of journalism. Her extensive repertoire began at Eagle Broadcasting Corporation's DZEC, where she cultivated her skill set and learned many things about the field of journalism. Nung nasa DZEC ako, kami trained kami sa lahat. Multitasking kami lahat. Pag news writer ka, dapat pag pag reporter ka, dapat news writer ka, dapat editor ka. Lahat I learned a lot talaga sa DZEC. Doon ka matututo lahat. Talagang ano, talagang iiyak ka talaga ng dugo. Sisigaw ka sa sobrang pagod. But uh, hindi hindi ibig sabihin ay magagalit ka na. No, ibig lang sabihin, ako hindi ko pinagsisisihan 'yon kasi I learned a lot. Initially working as an intern for her OJT, Professor Maluntag eventually moved on to become a news writer, beat reporter, and program host for EBC for seven years until she had to stop and take care of family matters. After taking a break to look after her son, she returned to the field becoming a news writer for various news companies such as RMN News Manila and Free Press Magazine where she's gotten the chance to travel locally and abroad to places such as Davao where she met and had the chance to interview President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, Negros Occidental, Marawi Ground Zero, Palawan, and more. Professor Maluntag also had the chance of visiting New York and Los Angeles with the Philippine lawmakers for the absentee voting consultation. Sukotay Tamatirat Open University in Bangkok, Thailand, Hong Kong, and Macau, which is all related to her profession as a journalist. Currently, she is an online journalist at Remate.ph covering the House of Representatives, while also teaching at her alma mater, New Era University College of Communication. Lahat tayo ay kailangan tumanaw ng utang na doon. And this is my uh, own little way of paying back na makapagturo sa New Era University. Professor Maluntag's initial dream career was actually to become a doctor. It wasn't until she enrolled in college where she found her passion for journalism. With a familial background of teachers, her father was the one who encouraged her to become a teacher as well. Dapat ka maging teacher. Sabi ko, bakit ko kinakailan maging teacher? Basta I think you have, you, you must be a teacher uh, someday, sabi nung tatay ko. Ma'am Meloy's hard work and steadfastness in her career is very evident. She encourages the new generations, the aspiring future journalists and broadcasters to work hard for their dreams and never compromise their beliefs. Her students, such as myself, can feel her passion for teaching as she shares her inspiring experiences and wisdom, making me proud to say na prof ko to. This has been Alina Monique Santos for NEU Spotlight. Para sa College Insight, bisitahin natin ngayon ang NEU Rizal Branch upang ibahagi sa atin ang isa sa mga college ng NEU, ang College ng Agriculture. Ibabahagi sa atin ni Paul Ladrino. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Nandito po tayo ngayon sa Pinugay Baras Rizal upang bisitahin at tuklasin pa ang isang branch ng New Era University, ang Rizal Branch. At dito rin ay mas makikilala pa natin ang College of Agriculture. Isa ang sektor ng agrikultura sa mga pinakamahalagang bahagi ng lipunan ngayon. Kahit noong unang mga panahon pa lamang, ay ito na rin ang nananaig na industriya ng humanidad. Dahil dito, Patuloy rin ang pag-unlad ng karunungan sa nasabing larangan. Habang tumatagal ay dumarami pa ang iba't ibang mga kaparaanan o teknik sa farming at agriculture. 
Ang pagbangon ng New Era University o NEU dito sa lalawigan ng Rizal ay kaalinsabay ng groundbreaking ceremony ng isang two-story building noong June 30, 2017. Matapos nito noong September 14, 2018, ipinagkaloob na ng Commission on Higher Education o CHED ang Government Recognition para sa NEU Rizal Branch. Mula noon, Ito na ang naging tahanan ng College of Agriculture ng NEU. Nagsimula ang klase ng mga pioneer student ng College of Agriculture noong January 7, 2019. Magmula noon, patuloy na lumalago at tumarami pa ang nagdanais na mag-aral ng agriculture dito sa NEU. Bukod sa mga klase dito sa campus, nakilahok na rin ang mga estudyante sa mga off-campus activities na patuloy rin na nagdagdag ng kaalaman at karanasan nila pagdating sa agrikultura. Matatagpuan ang mismo site ng College of Agriculture sa bulubunduking bahagi sa paana ng Sierra Madre. Malawak rin ang mga lupaing sakahan dito, kaya ito ang naging ideal location sa pag-aaral ng agrikultura. Pagdating mismo sa campus, sasalubong sa atin ng malinis na hangin at kalikasan. Tatagpuan sa ibabang bahagi ng campus ang plantation at mga livestock shelter na kung saan ginagamit ng mga estudyante sa kanilang mga activity. Sa taas naman ay ang tool shed na kung saan naglalaman ng mga kagamitan at devices na ginagamit rin ng mga mag-aaral. Sa kasalukuyan, ang bagong two-story building ng College of Agriculture ay tapos na. at inaantay na lamang ang schedule ng pagpapasinaya. Ito ay simula pa lamang ng patuloy na paglago ng College of Agriculture ng New Era University. Nawa ay na-enjoy ninyo ang isinagawa nating mini tour dito sa NEU Rizal Branch. At sana ay nakatulong kami ng malaki sa pagpapakilala sa inyo ng College of Agriculture na isa lamang sa marami pang mga courses na ino-offer ng ating universidad. Yan ang ating College Insight. Ako po si Paul Eranio Ladrillo para sa NEU Spotlight. Para sa off-campus, lumipad naman tayo papunta sa Latin America. Bisitahin natin ang Pueblito Paisa na matatagpuan sa Medellin, Colombia. Sasamahan tayo ni Janica Ira Peralta. Buenos días, buenas tardes y buenas noches a todos los espectadores de NEU Spotlight, donde quiera que estén. Me llamo Janica Ira Peralta y hoy les cuento sobre la joya antigua de Antioquia. Paisas son las personas nacidas en Antioquia, un departamento colombiano, y esta palabra también se usa para representar a su cultura. Si quieren una descripción precisa de paisa, tendrían que ir a Pueblito Paisa, ya que los colombianos afirman que representa la cultura paisa como ningún otro. Encima de este cerro, Somos provistos con la vivacidad de los colores brillantes de los edificios en este pueblo pequeño, que conserva las estructuras tradicionales de un pueblo antioqueño del siglo XIX y XX. Uno pensaría que los coloridos edificios son solo estructuras decorativas, pero en realidad son tiendas que venden bocadillos y artesanías paisa. El pueblo se encuentra en uno de los cerros tutelares de la ciudad de Medellín, encima del cerro Nutibara, y está a 80 metros sobre el nivel de la ciudad con una área de 33 hectáreas.
Dentro de la ciudad pequeña, también tenemos acceso al Museo de la Ciudad, que exhibe pinturas y esculturas dentro del edificio, incluyendo un mapa de Medellín junto con su historia. También hay una tienda de recuerdos en el piso abajo para comprar un recuerdo. Aquí también pueden consumir el plato tradicional, la bandeja paisa, y disfrutarlo con limonada gratis para lavar la grasa de cerdo y la vista panorámica como plato adicional. Bandeja limpia certificada. La bandeja paisa contiene frijoles, arroz, huevo, patacones, arepa, carne molido, chicharrón y ensalada. Es genial ver cómo ha progresado Antioquia, observar los edificios de los siglos XIX y XX y luego mirar a la vista del Medellín actual desde lo alto del cerro para ver la diferencia. De hecho, una hermosa vista. Aunque sea el pueblito paisa pasó por las renovaciones para mantener su estructura y cooperar con la advocación de Medellín para promover ser una ecociudad con áreas verdes con movilidad sostenible adicional, todavía tiene la esencia de la tradicional Antioquia del siglo XIX y XX. De nuevo, soy Yannica Ira Peralta y están viendo en EO Spotlight. Para su panorín at en Huli natin sisilipin ang award-winning animated film na Up na siya rin bumuo sa childhood ng karamihan sa atin ngayon na ihahatid sa atin ni Maurice Ann Franco. Hello everyone! Welcome back to another film review here on NEU Spotlight. In this episode, we are going to feature a movie that is one of the sweetest, most touching children's tearjerkers in Charlotte's Web in 1973. So this is a fantastic film with characters that are as realistic as they come and who spend a lot of time floating above Venezuela's rainforest. If you're picturing the flying house with thousands of balloons from the animated film up, you're correct! So without further ado, join us on Fly High as this film tells an enchanting journey through the animated masterpieces of our childhood. Up was released in May 2009 and was the first animated and 3D picture to open the Cannes Film Festival. Following Beauty and Abyss, the picture got five Academy Award nominations including Best Picture, making it a second animated film in history to receive such a nomination. Pixar Animation Studios, which is at the forefront of modern animation, has created yet another masterpiece. Pete Doctor, who also directed Monsters Incorporated, directed the film. So the story revolves around Carl Fredrickson, an elderly widower voiced by Edward Asner, and Russell, a dedicated young wilderness adventurer voiced by Jordan Nagai. Everything just starts with a love story as beautiful and wonderful as any I've seen in film animation. Carl and Ellie, two young kids, unite and learn that they embrace the same desire to become explorers one day. Ellie and Carl grow into adults, fall in love, marry, buy a random house, and renovate it into their dream home, have a family, and grow all together. The couple saves their spare money in a gallon jug to afford their vacation to the famous Paradise Falls, but life leads to frustration, flat tires, home repairs, and medical expenses. Ellie, unfortunately, succumbed to her illness and died. Carl's life after Ellie is the heart of the film. He withdraws from the society, stands firm against the world, keeps his house as a memorial, and converses with Ellie who is no longer with him. He chooses one day to gather his belongings and fly away. Literally. 
When he has no choice but to enter a retirement home, he rather launches the house from the city using countless helium-filled balloons and flies to Paradise Falls. Russell the Young Wilderness Explorer determined to achieve his assist an elderly person badge gets an intentionally stowed away on his porch. Carl's adventure turns out to be made easier by the fact that he can fly from his home to South America. He not only has to look after the child, but he also picks up a big bird and a speaking dog named Dog, who is voiced by Bob Peterson. Carl simply wants to build his house by the falls like he promised Ellie many years ago. Carl rapidly learns, however, that there is more at stake than his own aspirations. The chuckles are only matched by the thrills in this Pixar film, which is undoubtedly the funniest of them all. The audience laughs at Carl's grumpiness and Russell's humorous innocence, while dog comedy is prevalent and slightly twisted by their capacity to talk. Life is a series of wonderful adventures. All you need is a little bit of bravery. There are lessons to be gained about how to make the most out of life, whether viewed through the eyes of a kid or an elderly person. Just like what Anna wrote in a movie, thanks for the adventure, now have a good one. Thank you for joining us for the film review this month. This is Maurice and Franco for any spotlight. Para naman sa X, na kasi na mundo ng weightlifting sa pagtuturo mismo ng isang NEU weightlifting varsity. Sa iba balita ni Ergin S. Kanya. Believe in yourself and never give up on your dreams. Yan ang pahayag ni Heidelin Diaz after winning the Philippines' first ever Olympic gold medal. Have you ever wondered how she started and how the sport weightlifting works? Well, today, we will be featuring a varsity student in New Era University and join us as we discover his weightlifting journey. I am Sebastian Yuli A. Garcia, a third year nursing student from New Era University. And I started weightlifting no 17 years old ako during my high school days in New Year University. Weightlifting and powerlifting are often mistaken by the majority to be the same, but they are completely different. Weightlifting is a lift na overhead, while powerlifting is in the overhead. In weightlifting competitions, there are weight categories like in boxing competitions, and as of now, na 74 kilograms category ako. The weightlifting journey is difficult, lalo na hindi kailala yung sports sa bansa natin. Nandun yung risk na baka mabalaya kami ng buto or ma-injury kami habang lumalaban. Despite all the challenges that they have faced, they continue to give glory to the school by achieving various awards in different competitions. 2017 Philippine Championship won gold and won silver. 2018 Philippine National Open Age Group Raw Championship, Bronze Medal and Team Champion. 2018 5-in-1 Power Lifting Championship, Silver Medal and Team Champion. Show of Strength Philippines 2019, 2 Gold Medals and Team Champion. Luzon Open in National Interschool Raw Championship, 1 Bronze and Team Champion. 2019 Do Foam National Bench Press Championship, 3 Gold Medals and Overall Champion. I will demonstrate, explain the proper posture and lift execution for clean and jerk, ground, collarbone to overhead. First step is before holding the bar, ensure that your foot is besides the center line of the bar. Next is holding the bar from the ground. Be sure to bend your knees and do chest out. In that way, hips is outward. Before lifting the bar, take a deep breath and keep holding your breath until the bar is on your collarbone. Second to the last is lift the bar with high elbow. Then lastly, before lifting the bar from collarbone to overhead, take a deep breath again. Then hold until the bar is on the ground after lift. First notch is ground to overhead. Nagbigay naman siya ng payo para sa mga estudyanteng may balak na pumasok at mag-venture into sports. Kapag papasok ka in any kind of sport, dapat committed ka at all aspects of life like effort, time, and etc. Nandun yung bago pumasok sa sport, dapat meron kang basic knowledge, paano mag-train, food intake, and proper hydration. 
Na support namin na weightlifting and powerlifting, nandun yung fear na mapakamabaliya kami ng buto while pagkumpit. Pero walang mangyayari bilang athlete, kumakakot lang tayo lagi. Kaya nga tayo nagka-train at nandun yung paghingi ng guidance sa ama para tulungan tayo sa pag-train at magtagumpay tayo sa bawat competition na ating lalakbay. We hope you learned a lot and enjoyed this segment. This is Urjan Esconia reporting for NE Spotlight. At dyan nagtatapos ang mga balita at special features para sa episode na ito. Nawa ay nag-enjoy kayo. Maraming salamat rin sa patuloy na panonood at pagtangkilik ng ating programa. Kaya upang wala ma-miss out sa marami pang programa na ilulungsad ng Hudyat, Don't forget to like and subscribe sa ating channel and be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified. Muli, ako po si Renzi Ubaldo at ito po ang NG.